It's California Edition. My name is Brad Pomerantz. It's my honor to introduce you to Maria Clave. She is the president of the Harvey Mudd College, which has become such a remarkable institution for science, engineering, math, technology. You have been an advocate for increasing diversity in the STEM fields. Talk to us about your passion. Well, when I was growing up, I thought I was a boy. Mm. And I loved all things boy. So I played the trumpet, I loved math and science, and um, it was at a time when there weren't a lot of women uh, becoming mathematicians or physicists or scientists in general. And so when people told me that, you know, why would you want to be a mathematician, Maria? There are no good female mathematicians. Why would you do that? Mm -hmm. I just went, I, I'm yeah. really good at mathematics. Right. I'm going to do this. Right. And so, you know, from a very early age, I did my first TV show trying to introduce girls um, interest girls in math when I was 17. Wow. So, I mean, it's been a passion for a long right. time. And both you and your husband are mathematicians, is that right? We are both mathematicians he, and computer scientists. Is he in, acad uh, in academics as well? He is, he wasn't when we met, he worked okay. for IBM Research. And what does he do, if I may ask? Uh, for the last, um, uh -huh. we've been married 34 and a half right, years. Right. We have worked for the same institution our entire married life. I love that. And so I wanna talk more about what you're doing specifically at Harvey Mudd to bring in and we can talk more about women because it is such a premier institution you really can effectuate change we can because we're tiny we have right. 800 students we have moved from having perhaps 31 percent female students when i arrived eight years ago mm. and we're now at 47. Wow. but we also are about 40 percent female on our faculty and right. it's distributed right through all the departments and we are proving that you can make engineering and computer science, which both have, engineering is about 19% uh, female in undergraduate major across the country. Computer science is about a little bit less than 15%. And it's interesting you mentioned those two fields because what I've noticed is that so often when you talk about STEM, it's the S that gets the most attention. It's the biology. It's the chemistry. Right. It's you want to become a pre-med major so you can then go to medical school. You're looking to really make STEM include all four letters. Absolutely. And in particular, if you look at where the job demand is right now, mm -hmm. it's primarily computer science and computer-related engineering areas. And give us a sense, you just told me this before we went on, about how difficult it can be, male or female, to enter medical school, because you have so many pre-med students that in the end... The vast majority of people who want to go to medical school medical school, mm -hmm. probably more than 90% of them won't get in mm. because there just aren't enough positions. It's interesting when you think about computer science and engineering because, you know, when I was growing up, those were the professions for the geeks and the nerds. Yeah. I'm but, married to a geek. But, but, but now it's kind of cool to be a geek and a nerd. It's like geek chic. You yeah. Know? So I'm wondering if you're seeing uh, kind of the wall being teared down when you think about, you know, the geeks and the nerds. Because now, you know, you look in all the fashion magazines and they're dressed like geeks and nerds. Yeah, well, I'm always dressed like a geek and a nerd. <laughs> right. And as my daughter says, you're married to a dork, you're a dork, <laughs> your oldest child is a dork, all of your friends are dorks. But now it's cool to be a dork. Well, she thinks it's semi-cool, okay. but not so much. So um, even today, when geeks seem to be cool, right? young women are not interested in computer science and engineering because mm -hmm. first of all, they think it's boring. Right. Secondly, they think they won't be good at it. And third, they think the people who are in those professions are geeks with no social life right. and they don't want to be seen as that. So the solution is you frame computer science and engineering if you want to attract a diverse population, right. including young women, right. you frame it as creative problem solving. Which it is. Which it is, yeah. yeah. In the truest sense. And it's creative problem solving. It allows you to have an impact on the world around you. You earn great salaries. Oh, yes. And it's intellectually inspirational. What's remarkable about your journey to bring this issue of diversity and computer science to the fore is you've been doing this for you know decades, and yet a moment in time very recently thrust you 
into the national spotlight and put more attention on this issue than you could have ever imagined. Absolutely. And I'm talking about a friendly interview you were conducting with a friend of yours. You were on the Microsoft board. His name is Satya Nodella. He's the CEO of Microsoft. And you asked him a question. Who knew that question would turn into the firestorm of the week? And But it has drawn attention to your passion. Absolutely. Tell us what happened. So the happened. question that I asked Satya was, Satya, what advice would you give to women who have difficulty in asking for a raise? And Satya answered, which is, Satya's from South India. Right. It, he gave a culturally appropriate for his culture answer. It was not aimed at women, but he said, you know, not asking for raises actually, and just keeping your head down and doing great work brings you great karma and the system will take care of you. Trust the system. And there were 8,000 people in the audience, uh, seven and a half thousand of them were female. Right, right. And most people, well, when he gave that answer, because I myself am one of those crazy people who has difficulty asking for a raise. Right, right. And I've coached a lot of women and men who have difficulty ask, sure. asking for a raise. I said, you know, Satya, I'm just gonna have to disagree with you a little bit. Right. Because I myself have had more than once have not really been willing to ask for an appropriate salary. And I don't want people to make the same mistakes that I have made. And therefore, my advice is, first of all, do your homework. Right. Find out what a reasonable salary is. And second, role play with a good friend so you can be comfortable when you go in to ask your boss for the raise. But who knew within 24 hours you would be being interviewed throughout the country, he was having to do a little damage control. Right. I mean, and the thing is, again, it was not a, a, an adversarial situation. It was not at all. It just, but, but the good news is, it seems as if at the other end of the rainbow, there was, there was a, a pot of gold. A pot of gold when because it comes to this issue. It raised, first of all, it made Satya realize that there were issues around diversity in tech that he was not in touch with. And what's, and, and what's stunning is, well, he admitted it. You he admitted it, and he said, if I'm out of touch, I'll bet a bunch of people on my senior leadership team are also out of touch. And so they have been talking, and there are all kinds of new programs at Microsoft really looking at this kind of issue. So the other thing is, I think every tech CEO sort of went, mm -hmm. oh, Right. And so the conversation is happening in a lot of companies right now. So I'm sorry about right. how embarrassing it was for Satya because right. it was embarrassing and painful for him. Is he mad at you? No, he's, he's not. He's not mad at you? He's not okay. like, he, I, I right. adore the guy, right. to be really honest. I mean, he's just a wonderful and, leader. And I must say, I heard your interview on NPR and you were incredibly gracious with the whole situation and really spoke from your heart and spoke your truth. And that was refreshing, and which is why I said I, I would love to have the president on. Well, I'm right. delighted to be here right. and I'm delighted to talk about it. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think we all make mistakes. Right. I certainly make lots of mistakes. And the sign of a truly great leader is somebody who can admit that they made a mistake and fix it. And that's what Satya did, and it's one of the reasons I think he's such a great leader for Microsoft. And it's it's one of the reasons I wanted to interview him at the Hopper Conference, because I think he's amazing. Right, which is a conference that targets women in, in computer science. Exactly, women okay. in tech. So, as I mentioned to you, I have two daughters, seventh and fifth grade. They seem to love science. What can I do as a dad? What can the moms and dads and grandmas and aunts and uncles do to encourage our daughters? So one thing I would really encourage mm -hmm. is give them some exposure to coding because mm -hmm. it's so much fun. I mean, this sort it's of- It's a puzzle. It's a puzzle. It's, um, it's a wonderful way mm. to be creative using your brain and your artistic talent and lots of other uh, music and things like that. So one of the things I, I really um, recommend is to try and get access in middle school uh, and early high school right to courses that really present computer science and coding as creative problem solving. And just to make a pitch for Harvey Mudd College, we have it's a- easy. Yeah, <laughs> It's easy. It's easy to make have a pitch a, for that fine institution. We have <laughs> a MOOC, Masters for Open right. Online Course, right. to make it easy for a math or science we'll teacher to teach We'll put that information this. on the screen. Absolutely. Her name is Maria Clave. She is the president of the Harvey Mudd College. My name is Brad Pomerantz, and this is California Edition.